Hello, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. A PKR leader has called for Radzi Jidin to be punished. This is over his remarks made in Parliament on Tuesday and for refusing to listen to the directive by the Speaker. Shamsul Iskandar Muhammad Akin has called for Putrajaya MP Radzi Jidin to be punished for his remarks against Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and for his refusal to follow the directive by Dewan Rakyat Speaker Johari Abdul during the winding up debate for the 12th Malaysia Plan midterm review in Parliament on Tuesday. Shamsul, who is the government's political secretary's council chairperson, said the council would urge de facto law minister Azalina Othman Said to start proceedings to suspend Radzi from his duties to serve as a lesson for all MPs. In a statement, he pointed out that Radzi's rude actions was broadcast throughout the whole country and said that it cannot be ignored. He said during the proceedings, the Speaker had followed all procedures provided under the provisions of the Dewan Rakyat, including asking the Prime Minister to clarify what he had meant by his Putrajaya remark, which he said referred to the previous government's administration. He added that it was clear that Radzi had misunderstood the meaning of Anwar's statement by thinking that Putrajaya meant he was referring to him. He said Radzi could have put forward a resolution if he was not satisfied. However, he ignored the Speaker's directive and reacted according to his own emotion. Shamsul added that Radzi also lost his discipline, moral and respect for the House and disrupted the winding up of debate for 20 minutes. During the sitting on Tuesday, Radzi had been ordered to leave the Dewan Rakyat for his continuous argument with Johari regarding Anwar's statement. He had demanded that Anwar retract the remarks made against him and his party. Rafida Aziz has hit out at little Napoleons who are forcing their will when making rules for the youths, which has an impact on racial diversity. Former Minister Rafida Aziz has called for an overhaul of the country's education system to enable the youth to compete with the best globally. She also slammed little Napoleons who forced their will when making rules in areas under their jurisdictions. In a statement to Malaysia Kini, Rafida said they were coming up with ridiculous rules, such as on kids dressing in attire that impact racially diversity and rules on the segregation of males and females at events, just to name a few. Elaborating, Rafida said the country's education system needed to be overhauled in many aspects, including its contents, delivery and curricula, to prepare the youth to compete in the global arena. According to her, teachers themselves must be equipped with the suitable knowledge and proficiency to teach the young who would be future administrators and bureaucrats. She said the longer the revamp is delayed, the worse it will be on the young. Rafida added that parents must also ensure their children are taught the right things in the right way. She said this in response to a report about a secondary school in Kajang, Selangor, that allegedly barred students from wearing the traditional clothes of other cultures during Merdeka Day celebrations in school. Previously, FMT had reported that the school also did not allow Indian students to wear saris to the event and told those wearing the holy thread on their wrists to remove them. An officer from the Deputy Education Minister's office told Malaysia Kini yesterday that the Slangor Education Department is conducting the probe and appropriate action will be revealed once the investigations are completed. Hassan Karim has told Pakatan Harapan to not burn its bridge with Muda. He said they will still need Syed Sadiq's support when they need two-thirds majority to pass reforms in Parliament. Pasir Gudang MP Hassan Abdul Karim has urged Pakatan Harapan to not burn the bridge with Muda. In a statement posted on Facebook today, the PKR leader said this is as the ruling coalition still needs the youth party's support to push through reforms that require a two-thirds majority in parliament. Hassan pointed out that currently the Madani government only has 147 MPs in the Dewan Rakyat and a two-thirds majority will require the support of at least 148 MPs. He said that this is why Muda is important, even though they only have one seat held by its president, Syed Sadiq Syed Abdurrahman. Hassan noted that despite Muda quitting the government bloc in parliament, the party did not join the opposition coalition of Perikasan National. 
He said that this was evidenced by Syed Sadiq not leaving the Dewan Rakyat alongside PNMPs when they staged a walkout from the hall on Tuesday when Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim was delivering his winding-up speech on the 12th Malaysia Plan Midterm Review. Hassan also pointed out that Syed Sadiq had pledged that he would remain supportive of the government's agenda when it comes to voting in the Dewan Rakyat on constitutional and institutional reforms. The support, he said, will come in handy as the government looks to enforce two crucial reforms, namely the separation of powers between the Attorney General and Public Prosecutor and reviving the Parliament Services Act. He said the Prime Minister should pay heed to Muda's positive stance of wanting to play the role of a constructive opposition. Hassan added that Muda is not a destructive party that opposes for the sake of opposing, and this is why Harapan should not burn its bridge with the party. We are often faced with nutrient deficiency needed for our body. This is why I choose Jishur. Jishur is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink that helps to improve the immune system and strengthen our bodies. It has to be Good Morning Jishur. The court will make their decision on November 9th on Syed Sadiq's CBT and money laundering case. The High Court in Kuala Lumpur will decide on November 9th on whether to acquit or convict Muar MP Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman on charges of abetting in criminal breach of trust, misappropriation of property and money laundering. A search in the judicial system today revealed that Judge Asha Abdul Hamid will deliver the verdict at the end of the defense case at 9 a.m., According to Bernama Deputy Public Prosecutor Wan Shaharuddin Wan Ladin also confirmed the date. On March 14 this year, the defense team closed its case after calling four witnesses, including Syed Sadiq. Syed Sadiq had been ordered to enter his defense on the four charges after the prosecution managed to establish a prima facie case against him. He is charged as the Den Bursatu Youth Chief with abetting the wing's former assistant treasurer, Rafiq Hakim Razali, who was entrusted with 1 million ringgit in funds belonging to the youth wing to commit a criminal breach of trust by misappropriating the funds at CIMB Bank, Menara CIMB KL Central on March 6, 2020. He is also charged with misappropriating 120,000 ringgit from the Maybank Islamic account belonging to Armada Bumi Bersatu Enterprise by causing Rafiq Hakim to dispose of the money at a Maybank in Taman Pandan Jaya between April 8 and April 21, 2018. Said Sadiq also faces two counts of money laundering, namely two transactions of 50,000 ringgit each, believed to be proceeds from unlawful activities from his Maybank Islamic account into his Amanah Saham Bumiputra account at a bank in Taman Perling, Johor Bahru on June 16th and June 19th, 2018. Fuzia Saleh will lodge a police report over what she called a concerted attack after a video of her shopping for household groceries went viral, drawing criticism from netizens. Deputy Domestic Trade and Cost of Living Minister Fuzia Saleh said her team will lodge a police report over an old video which has gone viral recently and drew criticism from netizens. In the video, she was seen buying items such as biscuits, instant noodles, sardines, flour and cooking oil within a 200 ringgit budget. Fuzia told Malaysia Kini that she believes that it is a deliberate attempt to spread misinformation on the issue and is politically motivated. She said the way the attack is organized seems very concerted. She added that her team is working on the police reports and they are identifying the origin of the attack. The video, which had gone viral, was actually shot in July when the Community Communications Department had to modify a controversial infographic regarding the cost of living following online backlash. The infographic had stated that a family of four can survive on less than 400 ringgit worth of groceries per month, and a single person would spend just over 200 ringgit per month. In response to criticism then, Fuzia had shot a video during that month saying that she bought several grocery items for 136 ringgit and questioned who had said that 200 ringgit was not enough. Police questioned Muhyiddin today over speeches he delivered during the recent by-election campaigns. Perikatan National Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin was quizzed a second time today over a speech he delivered during the recent September 9th by-election campaigns. 
This was confirmed by Bukit Aman Criminal Investigation Department Chief Muhammad Shuhaili Muhammad Zain. According to Sinar Haryan, the speech in question was delivered in the Simpang Jeram constituency on September 3rd, where Muhyiddin allegedly said that Malays have lost political power and control of the federal government. On September 12, the police recorded Muhyiddin's statements regarding another speech delivered on the same day within the Pulai constituency, where another by-election campaign was ongoing. The Pulai speech saw Muhyiddin delivering a speech in which he declared it was haram to vote for Pakatan Harapan. This speech is being investigated under Section 505 of the Penal Code for statements conducing to public mischief and Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act 1998 for abusing network facilities. Muhyiddin's opponents had accused him of abusing religion for political purposes. He later clarified that critics had taken his speech out of context and that he was fully aware that he was in no position to issue a religious edict. Muhyiddin argued that his speech had urged voters not to support Harapan because of the rising cost of living. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you would like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Camelia. Thanks for watching.